Hello, this is Dave from Retired Tire Productions, and I want to welcome you to the Twisted Hobbies Step 1 FPV Plane Build Series under 250 grams, Part 3. So in Part 3 here, we're going to be working on the fuselage and putting in a hatch so we can access the components. So I've made a little template here where I want the hatch to be, and I'm going to put that on the face of this half of the plane right here and cut out a door. So here is the template I've cut out. It's basically just the front end of the plane traced out and then the hatch that I want to have is right here. And It's about three and a half by four inches and then a little bevel cut here on the corner. So this is basically how the hatch door will look if it's cut in and you'll, there'll be a little rim around here for the door to sit on. So now I'll go ahead and lay the template on the other half of the body here and just go ahead and trace this out and cut it with an exacto blade. So I've just marked the four corners here where I'm going to uh, cut and then I'll lay the ruler on and go ahead and cut it out. So there's the door cut out of the fuselage now let's just lay the two pieces together and see how it looks. So there's how it looks. Just need to glue the two pieces together. I've used the template to draw a little line around the fuselage here. So I don't want to get any glue in this area. So that's the purpose for the line. Glue will be outside that area. So I've got the little piece of wood right here just to keep everything aligned when I place the second half on. Okay, let's go ahead and start applying some glue all around the edges. Okay, I'm just going to spritz the other half off camera with some of the kicker and then press them together. Just spritzing away out there. Okay, going to lay that part over that. Trying to get that close. Everything looks lined up. That little piece of wood keeps it pretty even. I realize you can't see the whole thing, but I'm just pressing it on there and using this piece of wood to align it, to center it. I was going to put the door in the middle while I did it, but I decided it might glue down if I do that, so I didn't. Okay, I think we pretty much got it. Just put the top back on the glue. Should have done that to start with. All right, so we'll just let that dry. So I'm going to use some welders to glue on the motor mount right here to the foam. I've tested the welders on this EPP foam, and it seems to work just fine. It doesn't deteriorate the foam, so let's go and put it on. First, I'm going to give the motor mount a coat, and give this little coat, let it tack up, and then stick them together. Okay, after you get both pieces coated, you can just press them together like this with welders. This is like a shoe glue. I guess you could use goop as well. Uh, just move it around a little bit. Then pull it back apart and let it tack for about five minutes, something like that, and then you stick them together. So it's been about five minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and stick the two together now that they're tacked up. You can see how tacky that is now. So it's very strong this way. Just pressing it right on there. Okay. Now let's just put a rubber band around it. Like that. And we'll let it dry. So I have the heat shrink stripped off these bullet connectors for the motor and I'm going to desolder these bullet connectors and solder the wires straight together to save some weight. So here's the results after removing the bullet connectors right there. I got 2.1 grams. I removed these three sets of connectors and three pieces of a heat shrink. I didn't count these three pieces of a heat shrink because I put three more on so that kind of cancels out. 
So the total savings is 2.1 grams. I guess that's pretty good. Now getting ready to put the ailerons in. And what I'm going to use is a dimension that's like half of the length from where the wing tips go up to the center of the wing. So it's about 11 and a half across there. So I'm going to go with a five and a half inch ailerons and the width will be about inch and a half. So I put the wing section where they join right here on this line and then count over seven inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put a mark right here and then come back five and a half and mark right here and then an inch and a half this way and that will be the aileron five and a half by inch and a half so I'll show you again here with this ruler so I got the ruler right here where the winglet joins the main wing and then I come over seven and make a mark there and then go back five and a half and make a mark right there and then make my inch and a half marks out here. Okay, after I get them cut out, I do a slight bevel both sides. And that's just how I do it right here. Drag the knife right along. Cut off just a little piece. And then do the other side. Getting the ruler situated about in the middle, maybe a little towards the back, not much. And then take off a small strip. Not going for a lot here, just enough like that. That's both of them together. That's about it. For hinges, I'm going to use some of this overhead projector. Film. This is the stuff you write on, they used to use for overhead projectors. You can get it at Office Max. It's very strong and flexible, so I'm just going to cut some strips of that and then feed them into grooves in the wing and the ailerons for hinges. So I've marked it here at three quarters of an inch and I'm going to cut a three quarters of an inch strip off the side. So here they are, they're about inch and a half long and I've just beveled the ends a little bit. So I've just put some marks on the ailerons and the wing right here across from each other and those are going to be the centers of the hinges. So we want to make a groove about uh, half the length of this into the wing and into the aileron to insert it and then we'll glue it in with some CA. So maybe about uh, a little less than the knife blade in depth and make sure you go pretty much straight, doesn't have to be, but make sure it's in the center and then just groove it. I don't know if you can see it with my hands in the way, but I'm trying to keep the knife straight. Just groove it like that. Make sure it's deep enough. Okay, take one of these and just uh, test fit it into the groove. Sometimes it's a little hard to find the groove, but uh, no, it's right over that slot and you just feed it in there make sure it's deep enough okay so once you got them test fitted just pull them back out a little bit and put some CA put a little CA on both sides near, near the base right there just like that I don't want any on there but let me get my fingers clean okay now I'm gonna push it back in and that's all there is to it. You just push it in, press it a little bit, and you got it. All right, let's do the next one. We'll pull it out, not all the way out, just enough where we can put some CA on the base. I'm probably putting on too much, but it's hard to control. Put a little on there, and then push it in. Get it in there fast before it dries. I've got my fingerprint on it now. They're going to know who I am if they find this plane. There we go. Alright, let's cut the grooves on the wing side here. Same thing, just <clears throat> cut it straight. And 
about an exacto blade deep like that and we'll do both of those and then we'll test fit it okay now I have it test fitted so I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit here actually quite a bit so I can put that glue at the base and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue the base a little glue there a little glue there and then I'll flip it over and do the other side off camera here same thing just a little glue all right and now we're gonna push it in and leave about a millimeter space there so it isn't quite touching something like that I don't know if you can see it but there's a little bit of space and there it is pretty flexible so there's both sides done now now we just have to get the servo horns on them and uh, we'll be done for that. These servo horns come with the kit and I'm going to be using them for the ailerons. I'll have to come up with my own for the elevator because there's only two. But what I've done is put the hole right over the crack between the aileron and the wing. So that gives me plenty of throw. And I've also placed it so that it's just at the edge of the tape or of the uh, projector film hinge. So the hinge is right in this section right here and this is right at the edge of it. Gives me plenty of strength that way. So I'm just going to put a little bit of CA on the tab of this horn. It's hard to get just a little. There we go. Now we'll put it in the slot. I cut the slot myself, by the way. And there it is. Now we'll just go ahead and we'll do the other side. I went and finished the other side up off camera. So now both of these uh, servo horns are installed right now. Okay, what I'm thinking of doing is using these little servos right here. And these are Bluebird servos. And this is the uh, box they come in. So they're... Uh, they're pretty nice servos in their light. You can see here, let me get some of the specs. It's this one right here, the BMS 303. So it's, uh, its weight is about uh, 4.5 grams. So fairly light. Two of those could go in place of like one of a regular 9 gram servo. So then we have uh, the torque ratings and stuff like that. I think the torque will be ample to run just one of those little ailerons. So that's my idea. You can let me know what you think, uh, if this would work. In fact, uh, you might want to chime in on the whole idea here. What I'm trying to do is get more control for uh, windy conditions. In other words, just a rudder and an elevator may not be enough to control the plane if there's a little bit of wind. So what I want to do is instead of having a rudder have two ailerons but I don't know if that'll work you can let me know what you think I'm not sure but I, I feel like just an elevator and the ailerons will give me more control than rudder and, ale and an elevator so uh, you know this plane typically had just rudder and an elevator but since I'm going to use it for FPV and I'm going to have a flight controller I feel like you know, this setup will work better where I have ailerons. The flight controller with its stabilization could probably use the ailerons better than just a rudder. So uh, you can let me know what you think. Is this going to work? Or maybe I'm, I'm going down the wrong track. I don't know. It's kind of a build in progress rather than just a straight build. This is more of a conversion, taking a, a trainer and going to an FPV plane. So let me know what you think. Leave any comments you want under the video. Let me know what you think about this idea, and we'll see you in part four. Enter play.